God has received as we hear the word of the Lord. So today's message, um, we're starting a new theme in uh, February. We're going to look at an emotion called fear. Amen? We're going to look at an emotion called fear. Um, and there's different aspects of fear that we're going to look at um, this month. So today we're going to look at the fear of man. Amen. Fear of man or fear of an enemy. Um, and the scripture is from Psalm 56 from verse 1. Psalm 66 from verse 1. And it says, Be merciful to me, O God, for man would swallow me up. Fighting all day, he oppresses me. My enemies would hound me all day. For there are many who fight against me, O Most High. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear. Say, I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? Hallelujah. Today, is the theme, that's the theme, is fear. Fear of man. And this is a psalm of David when he was going through something very difficult and challenging in his life. And like we said in the psalms, whenever David, David wrote the psalms, it was a prayer out of the experience, out of what he was going through at that time. So this was a particular point that he was going through. But I want to tell you about fear today. He said in verse 3, next slide, he said, whenever I am afraid, whenever I am afraid. That means fear. Fear is an emotion. That is part of the human experience. He, fear is an emotion. It's an emotion that you feel. It's an emotion that, 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 that comes upon you sometimes. And when you're afraid, there's a part in the brain called the amygdala. It's, it's what controls your emotions. It's what controls your processes. When fear comes into you, that part of your brain is activated. And your brain starts making quick decisions. So your brain makes a decision because your brain wants to make a decision to keep you safe or wants to make a decision to keep you away from danger. So whenever you feel fear, a part of your brain is triggered that wants to make you rush and make a decision. And fear is mentioned over 400 times in the Old Testament. That's because some, so many people went through fear. So many people experience fear. And fear is, like I said, it's an emotion. So when you're afraid, you make these decisions. There's four different decisions that you make because your brain is trying to process it. Next slide. And when you are afraid, the next one. So when you are afraid, uh, this is what happens. So it goes through the eyes, and the, that's the part of the brain, the amygdala, that processes your decisions and wants to you know, make all your things and your choices and everything for you. So the Bible says that the fear of man causes a snare. So whenever you are, fe you are afraid, your brain triggers and you make one of these decisions. The first one is fights. So when you are afraid, when you, you think there's danger, the first thing you want to do is that your, your brain wants you to fight. So sometimes when somebody's being robbed, they, they, try, they start fighting back. It's, it's, it's just that's a quick decision that you make, that I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight it. I'm going to try and attack the thing. Amen. And, and then the next thing is, when you are afraid, the next decision is flight. Instead of fighting, sometimes your brain decides to run away. So when you're being chased by a dog, what do you do? You run away. Because your brain sees danger. And you think, this dog, I can't fight this dog because the way this dog is built, I will, I will die. So your brain says no. So the next one is flight, which is running away from the situation. So the first one is you want to fight. The second one is that you want to flight, which is run away from the decision. The second one is freeze. The third one is freeze. When you are afraid and you can't run, sometimes when, when you see horror films and people are, are, are shocked, they just freeze. You think, ah, just run away. But because their brain comes from, they don't know what to do, so they just freeze. They don't know whether to run, whether to fight, so they just stand still. Amen? So uh, you, they just stand still, and you hope that the danger will pass away. And these are all the decisions you make when you're afraid. And then the, next, the last one is fawn. When you are afraid, instead of you don't want to run, you don't want to uh, fight, you don't want to freeze, but instead what you do is you try and please the person or the thing that is attacking you to make it stop. 
That's what they call fawn. So fear is the response where the brain decides to try and please whoever is triggering the fear to prevent them from causing more harm. So these are the, the four decisions you make when you are afraid. So everybody goes through this. When you're afraid, you make this. And again, you make these decisions based on your environment and your upbringing. Your environment or your upbringing. A young lady who, had, uh, who was going to perform in front of a large crowd, she was very young, so it was her first time. And what she did was she was so afraid that she froze. She had a panic attack. She just froze. She couldn't, she couldn't, she couldn't speak in front of people. And that fear triggered her mind. It triggered her so much that ever since then, whenever she, um, she made career decisions to try and stay away from maybe speaking in front of people because she was afraid. So everything that she did, she did it based on the fear that she wants to run away. She doesn't like being in these situations. Amen? So, so you can make a decision based on your, your environment, based on your upbringing, or based on your trauma. Some of the traumas that you've gone through in your life, sometimes because you are so afraid deep inside your brain, you, you make decisions based on those traumas. Amen? Or when someone is being abused, maybe a man is abusing a woman, and the woman is afraid. So what does she do? The fear, the fear instinct makes her want to please the man so that the man will just stop or calm down sometimes. These are all responses that we make based on fear. Amen? Uh, sometimes even success brings fear. Sometimes when people get promoted, they are afraid because, hey, now I have big responsibilities. Oh, how am I going to do this? How is this going to work? You start becoming afraid, and then you start hiding behind or you start trying to do things. So there's so many different reasons why we make decisions. But when fear comes, this is what happens. And when fear comes, you don't think clearly. You make decisions fast. Sometimes, uh, this, uh, this, uh, I read this quote, it said, anger is fear in disguise. And sometimes when you try and fight someone or you're fighting something, it's because deep down you are afraid. And you want to push and show that you are strong, you are this and you are that. But deep down, you are afraid. So fear is something, it's an emotion that we all go through. And fear can be a detriment. Fear can be a detriment into your life. And you need to overcome fear. Amen? You need to overcome fear. Because when you are afraid, it can stop you, it can weaken your system. When you are afraid, you are not yourself. When you are controlled by fear, you, are, you, you, don't live your, you, you can't live your best life. When you are afraid, you are always restricted because your, your, your brain is thinking panic mode. Your brain is panicking inside. And so you can't think clearly to make a decision. And sometimes that's why people rush and do things that they regret because you are afraid. When you are afraid, it can take away your joy. When you are afraid, someone who lives in fear, they are never happy in their life. They are always worried, they are always scared, they are always, um, you know, all kinds of things because they are afraid. So fear can really restrict your life. It can stop you. And that's why it's mentioned over 400 times in the, just in the Old Testament alone. Do not fear, do not fear, do not fear. Because it can what? It can help you, it can steal your joy. It can stop your ability to do what you need to do. There are so many people that are talented, that have big potential, but because of fear, they are scared to apply for a job. Oh, what if they don't like me? What if they reject me? And then out of that fear, they stop. There are so many people that they are so, they are blessed with certain gifts. And you're thinking, why are you not using that gift? And the fear is stopping you from realizing your true potential. Because what fear does is it keeps you in bondage. It keeps you in bondage because you are always worried about what will happen in the future, what if, what people think, what people say, and then you are afraid, and then you live inside the bubble. Hallelujah. Say, no fear. Tell your neighbor, do not be afraid. Hallelujah. So it can stop your ability to do what you need to do. What you need to do. So if you are someone who struggles with fear, today you're going to pray to cast it out. For some of you, fear is the reason why you are not living your best life. Fear is the reason why you are just trying to be normal when God created you to be great. Fear is the reason why you don't want to step into new challenges. Fear is the reason why you don't want to take a bold step and take a risk in your life because you are what? Afraid. But today, God is saying that don't be afraid. Amen. Tell your neighbor he's talking to you. So fear of man or an enemy is common in the Bible. See, there were people in the Bible who were all afraid. Elijah was afraid. 
Elijah was at one point, he was afraid, and he ran away into a cave, and God was ministering to him. Moses was afraid. God called Moses, said, Moses, go. And Moses was thinking, he's going to, uh, to Egypt to stand in front of Pharaoh, a, a king, and, and declare the word of the Lord. And God's going to use him to bring Israel out of Egypt. And when God told him that vision, he was afraid. He said, God, can you not send somebody else? Because of the, big, the, the magnitude of the task. David was afraid. David was a man who was a warrior. No, David was the same person that killed Goliath. So sometimes even the strongest people, they struggle with fear at times. David fought, fought Goliath, a giant, and killed him. But yet in this psalm, he's praying and saying, God, I am afraid. So fear can happen at any time. Even the most courageous people can be afraid. Hallelujah. But God always tells his servants, whenever they are afraid, do not fear. Whenever God calls you, the first thing he says to you is do not fear. Whenever God called Joshua and revealed himself to him, he said, Joshua, do not be afraid. Because God knows that emotion, fear is an emotion. It can come to you anytime. It can come out of nowhere. And when you feed on fear, it will stop you. And God knew that Joshua, the task ahead of Joshua is big. And the only way he can achieve that task is to remove any aspect of fear in his mind. Hallelujah. So God said, the first thing he said to Joshua is, do not be afraid. The first thing he said to Mary, do not be afraid. The first thing he said to Gideon, do not be afraid. The first thing he said to Elijah, do not be afraid. The first message to his people is do not fear. Because if you are not careful, it will stop you. Hallelujah. But any spirit of fear, I pray for you right now. That God will remove it in the mighty name of Jesus. Any fear that's stopping you from taking risks in your life. Uh, may God remove it in the name of Jesus. Any fear that will stop your potential. That will stop your blessing. May God remove it in the name of Jesus. Your amen is too small. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do not fear. Revelation 2 10 says, Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. Even in Revelation at the end of time, God was saying to his people that you are going to suffer, but never be afraid. People give up on Christ when they are afraid. People give up on God when they are going through struggles because they are afraid. But he said, do not fear any of these things which you are about to go through. Hallelujah. Say, I will not fear. Will not fear. Say, declare, I will not fear. Will not fear. In Jesus' name. So, so David said in verse 2, next slide. That this is, this is, this is the, the reason why David prayed this psalm in Psalm 56. This is what was going on. When you read Psalm 21 verse 10, it says, Then David arose and fled that day from before Saul and went to Achish, the king of Gath. And the servants of Achish said to him, Is this not David, the king of the land? Did they not sing of him to one another in dances and saying? So David was afraid because he was running away from Saul. Saul was looking for him to try and kill him. Amen? Saul was trying to kill him. And when you go to the next slide, 1 Samuel 22, 6, said, When Saul heard, that David and the men who were with him had been discovered. Now Saul was staying in Gibeah under a tamarisk tree in Ramah with his spear in his hand and all his servants standing about him. David was afraid because of man. David was afraid because of an enemy. Because the enemy was trying to kill him. The enemy was trying to destroy his life. And whenever the enemy heard that David had been discovered, he had a spear in his hand. That means he was ready to kill David. He was ready to kill David. And that's why David was afraid because of the enemy. Hallelujah. Uh, we're going to pray so much today. David was afraid. And he was afraid because of the magnitude of the enemy. Next slide. And that's why he prayed this prayer in Psalm 50. He says, my enemies would hound me all day. For there are many who fight against me. Oh, most high. Hallelujah. He said, my enemies are chasing me. My enemies are looking for me. My enemies want to hear bad news about me. My enemies want to hear that my marriage is destroyed. My, my, my enemies want to hear that my children are gone wayward. My enemies want to hear that my, I've lost my job. My enemies want to hear. They are hounding me. They are meeting about me. They are planning to destroy my life. And he's crying to his father in heaven. They're almost high. There are many that fight against me. 
There are so many people that wish my downfall. David was fighting not just against Saul, but against people, against strangers, even people he did not know. They, they hated David for no reason. So there are many that are fighting against me. And when he, because he was going through that problem, he became afraid. He became afraid. He was in a battle against kings and strangers. David was fighting against a king, a king of Israel, a king of Israel. David was fighting against strangers, people he did not even know that they hated him. He was fighting against all of these things. That's what the Bible said, our, our battle is not against flesh and blood. If you think that you don't have an enemy, then you are joking. If you think everybody wants what's best for you, then you are, you are naive. If you think that everybody wants to see you happy, then you are, you are lying to yourself. Hallelujah. Don't, 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 don't lie to yourself. Don't pretend that this world is a happy place. There are so many things that is fighting against people. There are so many things in the spiritual realm that wants to bring you down. Even family members turn against one another to try and bring someone down. So you have to be, as a Christian, you have to be serious and understand that you are in a battlefield. You are fighting against spiritual hosts of wickedness. And as a Christian, you have to pray. Hallelujah. You have to pray because many are fighting against me. There are many that are fighting against me. And David's enemies had access to weapons. A king has access. If right now the UK is going to war, they have all these armies, they have all these things. So imagine, it's just one guy, David, just one single guy. And he's fighting against Saul, who was king of Israel at that time. Saul had an army. Saul had weapons. Saul had spies and all of these things. Saul had everything he needed to destroy David. To destroy him. Hallelujah. That's why he would say in another place in Psalm 54 verse 3. For strangers have risen up against me. An oppressor have sought after my life. They have not said God before. He said even strangers. Strangers have risen against me. I don't even know where they're coming from. Ah, well, 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 who are you? Sometimes someone will hear something about you and you're like, I don't even know you. Why, why do you hate me? I've never even spoken to you before. You don't know, I, we don't have any relationship. Why do you hate me for no reason? Hallelujah. But that is the work of the enemy. Strangers have risen against me. Hallelujah. His enemies had access to weapons. In 1 Kings 19, 1, it says, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Also, how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me. And more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow by this time. Look at this. Jezebel heard what Elijah had done. And Elijah, she sent a message to Elijah. She said, Elijah, I am giving you this warning. By this time tomorrow, you will be dead. Queen Jezebel, who had access to all kinds of weapons, all kinds of armory, he, she sent a threat to Elijah. Hallelujah. And that's what made Elijah run away. He said, hey, how can I stand against this woman? How can I fight against this woman? I am afraid, so I have to run from the situation. Remember, the fear response is you either fight or you run away. Hallelujah. And that's what Elijah did. He ran. And this is what David was doing. David was running. Running from Saul. He was running from Saul. He was running from the strangers. When you, look, when you study 1 Samuel, uh, the, that passage I shared with you, every time you just hear David running, the first thing you say, David fled. David fled. When Saul heard, Saul went here. And when David heard, David fled. David was just running away. Because that was a fear response. Because he was afraid. Hallelujah. Any fear in your life, may God remove it in the mighty name of Jesus. Because sometimes the people or enemy can rise against you. Sometimes you feel overwhelmed because the, the, because the strength of the attack. Sometimes the enemy is attacking you so much. And you feel like, I don't know how to stand in this battle. I don't know how to stand. I don't know how to fight these people. I don't know what to say to them. Because they are stronger than me. The situation is stronger than me. The people coming against me, they are more than me. I cannot fight on my own. And sometimes what you want to do is you want to run away from the situation. Hallelujah. But today, but today, any fear in your life, you need to know that God will deliver you. Hallelujah. You need to know that as long as you have God, nothing can stop in your way. You need to know that fear has no power over you anymore. You need to know that instead of running, I am going to pray. Hallelujah. I'm going to stand. Hallelujah. Because I am not afraid. What can man do to me? 
Next slide. Hallelujah. Amen. What can man do to me? And that's what David said in Psalm 18. God delivers me from my enemies. Hallelujah. It's not yourself that will deliver yourself. He said, God delivers me from my enemies. You lift me up above those who rise against me. You have delivered me from the violent man. Hallelujah. It is not my strength. I uh, said, declare, it is not my strength. It is not my power. It is the spirit of the living God. God will deliver me from any enemy that has surrounded me. Any evil meeting they are meeting against me. Any plan of the enemy to bring me down. I declare today, as I have heard the word of the Lord, God will deliver me. In the name of Jesus, whatever they are planning, whatever they are doing, whatever they are saying about me, I don't care because God will deliver me. Whatever they plan, God will deliver. Whatever they say, God will deliver. Whatever they accuse, God will deliver because He is my God. Amen. Hallelujah. Say, do not fear. God will deliver you. God will deliver you. And the next slide, Psalm 138, David said, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, even if I walk in trouble, even if trouble has surrounded every area of my life, God will stretch out his hand, hallelujah, against the wrath of my enemy. I declare this word over your life today, that anyone that is troubling you, anything that is troubling you, may God stretch forth his hand today. In the mighty name of Jesus, may God stretch his hand over your life today. In the name of Jesus, may the hand of the Lord come over your life, come over your children, come over your job, come over your marriage in the mighty name of Jesus wherever the enemy is gathered wherever they are meeting may the hands of the Lord go to the meeting place in the name of Jesus may God destroy any enemy that will rise against you, that will rise against your future, that will rise against your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus say I will not be afraid in Jesus name my God because God will stretch forth his hand when I am in trouble against the wrath of my enemies. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So David's fear was based not only that he was fighting against kings and strangers, but his fear was based on what the enemy was doing against him. So he said in the next slide, Father, Psalm 56 verse 1, he, he said, be merciful to me, O God, for man will swallow me up. Fighting all day, he oppresses me. My enemies will hound me all day, for there are many who fight against me. Oh, most high. Hallelujah. So what the reason why David was afraid was not only was he fighting against a strong enemy, but the enemy was intent. The enemy was, was sure. The enemy was determined to destroy David. Saul was determined. That means Saul even left his palace to chase David. Whatever Saul needed to do to kill David, he would do it. Hallelujah. So he uses these three words. The enemy wants to swallow me up. That means the enemy wants to trample. The enemy wants to crush me. He said they are fighting against me. Not only is Saul trying to crush him, but Saul is fighting against him. He said the enemy is hounding. That means he's looking aggressively against me. Let me give you some examples. Go to the next slide. So you see here that David arose and fled that day from before Saul and went to Achish, the king of Gath. This was a time when David, when the, the moment his head Saul was chasing him, he would run to another land. And when he went to this place, they were like, ah, is this not David? Is this not the man that used to be so strong? What is he doing here? And David was afraid. And because he was afraid, he pretended to be mad. And his, his, his saliva was just coming from his mouth. And he was doing all kinds of crazy things because he was afraid that they would kill him. And then the king just sent him away. Hallelujah. And he ran to another place. David was afraid because they were trying to crush him. Next one. Another example. Uh, 1 Samuel 22 says, says, When Saul heard that David and the men who were with him had been discovered, Saul was staying in Gibeah under the Tamil tree in Ramah with his spear in his hand and all his servants standing about him. And look at this verse 8. 
all of you have conspired against me. There is no one who reveals to me that my son has made a covenant with the son of Jesse, referring to David. And there is not one of you who is sorry for me or reveals to me that my son has stirred up my servant against me. Verse 9. Then Doak, this is the stranger. David didn't even know this guy. But this guy wanted to please Saul. So he betrayed David's location to Saul. That, hey, I know where this David is. Come, come, come. And this Doag was a stranger. And that's why he says, strangers have risen against me. Because he didn't even know who this guy was. He said that then Doag the Edomites, who were set over the servants of Saul, and said, I saw the son of Jesse going to Nob, to Ahimelech the son of... David didn't even know this guy. But look what he's saying. I know where David's location is. Hallelujah. You don't even know who your enemies are. You think you know, but you don't even know. Sometimes the one even smiling at you is your enemy. Hallelujah. That's why as a Christian, you have to pray. You have to present and invest in. And he inquired of the Lord for him, gave him provisions, and gave him the sword of Goliath. He's basically snitching on David. He's snitching. Next one. And the next one here. Then the king said to the guards who stood about him, turn and kill the priest. So when Saul found out that David went to a priest to get bread and to get weapon, they went there, said that you, you priest, you are, you are with David. And so the, he, uh, Saul commanded um, the, the, the servants to kill all the priests. And they said, no, we can't kill a priest. We can't kill a pastor. Amen. But the, 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 the door, the guy who, verse 18, the person who is a stranger, he rose up and killed all the priests because of David. Because of David. Hallelujah. So that's why David was afraid because it, was, it wasn't a joke. People were dying because of him. The moment they found out that David was here, they would go and they would kill whoever is there. So that's why he was crying. That's why he was praying so much. Because the enemy has risen against him. And that's why he was afraid. Hallelujah. And David was afraid of how much the enemy knew about him. Next slide. Then David arose and felt that this is when he went to that king. Uh, he, he pretended to be mad. And the servants of Achis said to him, Is this not David, the king of the land? They did not sing of him to one another. In dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, and David is tens of thousands. Now David took these words to heart and was very much afraid. Because they were like, hey, this is that David. We know him. He was, used to be so good. He, God used to use him to do so many things. Look at him now. And they started questioning him, and, and they knew everything about him because they had heard what David was doing in Israel. And when David saw that they knew so much about him, he said, ah, how can I stand? Everywhere I go, people are trying to bring me down. And David took these words to heart. And that's what happens when you hear that someone has risen against you. When you are in trouble, when you are battling all kinds of things, sometimes you take it to heart. And when you take it to heart, the fear in your brain is triggered. And when that fear in your brain is triggered, then you begin to do one of the four things, which is run away, which is fight, which is just freeze, and which is just trying to please people. Because the fear is triggered. Hallelujah. And that's why God says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid because you will make a decision that you will regret. Hallelujah. So when the enemy rises, the, the enemy's intentions is to bring you down. But you need to understand that God will deliver you. Hallelujah. Whenever anyone rises against you, just have a faith, not in yourself, but in God, that God will deliver me from my enemy. God will deliver me from my oppressor. God will deliver me from my trouble. God God will deliver me from whatever I'm going through because he loves me. Hallelujah. God is able. Say, God is able. Next slide. God is able. And he sent from above. This is what Samuel said. He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. Hallelujah. When you are in trouble, just have a faith that God will send from above and will take you and will draw you out of any water. Hallelujah. God will take you out of any water that surrounded you. Any waters that you are in, that you feel like you are sinking. God will send you from above and deliver you in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare this way 
head over your life, that any water that you are in, that is sinking your life, may God deliver in the name of Jesus. May God deliver in the name of Jesus. Maybe your finances is sinking. May God deliver in the name of Jesus. Maybe your children are sinking. May God deliver in the name of Jesus. Maybe your marriage is sinking. May God deliver in the name of Jesus because he's more than able. He's more than able. That's why he said, Psalm 91, you will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. Hallelujah. God said, you will call upon him. Just call on him. He said, you will call upon me and I will answer you. Hallelujah. I will be with you in trouble. When you are in trouble, God is with you. Never think that you are alone. Never think that you are here by yourself. Every time you are in trouble, God is standing there right next to you because he has declared that he will never leave you and he will never forsake you. Hallelujah. So even when I'm in trouble, God is with me. And the word I declare is that God, you said that I will call upon you and you will answer me. Answer me today in the name of Jesus. Answer my children in the name of Jesus. Answer my problem in the name of Jesus. Answer my troubles in the name of Jesus. I declare the word of the Lord in Psalm 91 over your life. Whenever you call, may God answer. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whenever you pray, may God answer you. In the name of Jesus. I will deliver him. And I will honor him. Hallelujah. Say, I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. So David was afraid. That's why he's praying that Psalm 56. And this is the solution to the problem. This is how you stop being afraid. The solution to the fear is this. Just one thing that I want you to take for today. One thing I want you to always remember whenever fear comes. Remember this. Hallelujah. What did David say? Whenever I am afraid. Say, whenever I am afraid. I will trust in him. Hallelujah. So the key, the key, the key to overcoming fear is a complete trust in God. The key to overcome your fears, the fear that is stopping you from going forward, the fear that is restricting your life, the key is to a complete and utter trust in God. What is trust? Trust is also a brain process. Hallelujah. Trust is a positive feeling of confidence and security that someone is dependable. So you have, an, you have a trust. You trust not in yourself, but you trust in God. That God is what? Dependable. Hallelujah. He is a dependable God. And because he's a dependable God, I believe that he will come through for me. So when you trust in God, fear will just run away. Because you trust in God. Hallelujah. It means that you believe that God can do it. You believe that what God has said, he will do it. You believe that everything that we have declared today, you have faith in it, that God will do it. So you put your trust in God. And when you do that, every fear just runs away. It means that you believe in God's word. You believe in God's word. You believe in God's ability. You believe in God's strength. You believe in God's holiness. You believe in God's power. You believe in all of these things. And when you have that feeling towards a, a, a higher power, so the reason why you are, fear, you are afraid is because your feeling is inside and you are worried and you are troubled. But you need to transform that feeling to a higher power. Hallelujah. That God is dependable. And the moment you transform that feeling, then fear cannot stand anymore because you trust in God. Hallelujah. And it doesn't mean that your fear will go away. Fear, some fear, this trusting in God is not an absence of fear. No, you trust in God in the midst of fear. So even when you, that's what David said, whenever I am afraid, that means they will, the fear will come. But whenever that fear comes into my mind, whenever fear comes into my body, whenever fear comes into me, I, then, I, 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 I change my mind and I trust in God. When I'm afraid to apply for that job, I trust in God. That God can make a way. Hallelujah. God can make the smallest into the greatest. Hallelujah. So then that fear goes away. And then you apply for that job. Hallelujah. When you're afraid to take risk, you trust in God. That what God has started, he will bring it to completion. Hallelujah. And then you say, you take that step. Hallelujah. You, you take that boldness uh, and you take that step. Uh, you say, God, God, he, that, the God that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. And then when you declare those things, uh, fear just runs away. Hallelujah. And 
every fear in your heart today, every fear in your mind today, every fear in you today, may God deliver it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. As you trust in God, as you trust in his power, may that power overshadow you today in the name of Jesus. Say, I will not fear. I will not fear. Hallelujah. The moment you begin to trust, then the fear will go. That's what Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego did. Trusted in God. That's why they were not afraid of fire. When you trust in God, you're not afraid of fire. He said, King, do whatever you want, but my God will deliver me. Hallelujah. Even if he doesn't deliver me, I will not bow down to your God. And he went into the fire. And when he went into the fire, because he trusted God, the book of Nether said, I will put three people in there. But I see a fourth man. Hallelujah. And he looks at the Son of Man. Today, when you trust in God, the Son of Man will reveal himself to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are not afraid. Whatever you do to me, I will not be afraid. Even if you kill me, I will not be afraid. Because my God who I trust, my God who I trust, Daniel was not afraid. He was not afraid. He trusted in God. That's why even when they put him in the lion's den, the lion could not touch him. Hallelujah. The next morning, the king said, Daniel, are you still alive? And the king, yes, I am still alive. Because my God, whom I trust, hallelujah, he sent his angel to deliver me from the lion because I was innocent. Hallelujah. May God send his angels to deliver you today. Any trouble you're going through, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Because I trust in God. And when you trust him, fear goes away. When you trust in his word. When you trust in his power. When you know and you believe that God can do it. Fear will not be able to stand in your heart. And even when you are afraid, you remind yourself that God can do it. Amen. Hallelujah. And trust. Trust is gained through knowledge. This is what David said. Next slide. Whenever I am afraid. I will trust in you. In God, I will praise his word. His word. Your trust in God grows the more you know him. The more you know about God, the more your trust grows. That's why you have to be a student of your Bible. That's why you have to wake up in the morning and put 10 minutes aside and just read your Bible. Because the more you know about God, the more you trust him. Hallelujah. The more a, ch a child will never trust somebody. The, the trust grows when they spend time with the child, and the child knows that, okay, you are safe, you are good. Then the child then trusts you. That's the same thing with God. Hallelujah. You have to build a relationship, a communion with God, where you are always learning, where you are always growing. You are learning about your father, so that when trouble comes, you can declare the word of God over your life. Hallelujah. So you have to trust in him. That's what Daniel says, that those who know their God... Those who know their God, they shall what? They shall do exploits. Hallelujah. They shall be strong and they shall do great things because you know your God. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's, that's, that's the message for you today. It's for your trust to grow in God. Grow in trust. Trust him. Trust him. You know him through experience. Experience God for yourself. Experience God for yourself. Don't experience God through other people. Ex encounter God for yourself. Bring him in all your situations, everything you're going through. Bring, invite God into it and learn to walk with him in your life. Experience God for yourself that you may taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste yourself and see God is good. Have a testimony for yourself. Let, have a testimony this year. Pray for a testimony this year. Every challenge you're going through, invite God into it. Say, God, now this is a challenge. I want to experience you. I want to encounter you. I want to see how you, how you work so that when I go to church, I'm not just praising you through Psalms. I'm not just praising you through other people's experience. But when I'm worshiping, I'm worshiping you through my own experience. And there are some people, when it comes to worship, they start crying, they start doing all kinds of things because they have experienced God for themselves. That's why people don't need um, organs and drums to worship God. Because when they start to worship, they start thinking about what God has done in their life and then they just go crazy. Hallelujah. Experience God for yourself. Amen. That you may have a reason to worship him. Amen. Amen. And learn to trust him. And when you trust in God, it makes you realize the mortality of man. This is what David said, the last bit. This is what David said. Because he trusted God. Next one. 
because he trusted God, said, whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you, God. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? He started a psalm so afraid. But when he started trusting God, he said, ah, yes, he's a king. Yes, he has armies. Yes, he's stronger than me. But he's a man. What can he do to me? Hallelujah. I will not be afraid of him. What can he do to me? See, that's what happens. When you trust in God, your mind changes, and you're not afraid of people. You're not, whether they are king, whether they have an army, even 10,000 10, gathered against me, none of them will come to me. How many of you can declare that over your life? How many of you have that boldness that even if 10,000 people come against me, not one will touch me? How many, how many of you can stand in trouble and say that this trouble I'm going through, it will not come, it will not overcome me? How many of you have that boldness and courage and that trust in God that it might not look good today, but I have trust that by the end of this year, I'll be living in my best life? Yeah. How many of you have that trust in God that I might be single now, but by the end of this year, I'll be married and have my own ring? Yeah. How many of you have that trust? I may not have a job right now, but by the end of this year, I'll be living in my own job. How many of you have that trust in God? It might look bad now, but by the end of the year, I trust my Father to make a way. Amen. What can man do to me? Hallelujah. Never be afraid of anyone. Don't be afraid of any person in this world. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of what someone can do or what someone can say. They might seem more powerful. They might be richer. They might be stronger. But never be afraid of any man because none cannot touch you. Because you are a child of, a, of God. You are the anointed of God. Say, so touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. The moment you give your life to Jesus, you receive an anointing. That anointing is the Holy Spirit. And because you have an anointing, nobody can touch you. So have that trust in God. What can man do to me? That's why David had that trust. Hallelujah. I love this psalm so much. Because he started afraid. But when he started trusting God, he goes, ah, what can this guy do to me? And you see throughout David's life, when you read about it, you see throughout David that Saul could not touch David. Saul could not. After everything, Saul tried everything he could to kill David, but he couldn't touch him. God delivered him every single time. And even David had a chance to even kill Saul. But he didn't because he said, I'm trusting in God. Hallelujah. God will deal with you in his own time. Amen. Hallelujah. Anyone that's causing you to be afraid, God will deal with them in their own time. Amen. So you don't fight. As a Christian, you don't fight. You don't run away. You don't freeze. You don't fall. You just pray. And you trust in God. And he will do it. Hallelujah. Say, I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. I will trust in God. What can man do to me? Amen. Amen. Flesh just means, uh, basa, it just means the weakness and mortality of man. Isaiah said that what? Isaiah said, this is man. Now the Egyptians are men and not God. My enemy is a man, he's not God. And their horses are flesh and not spirit. When the Lord stretches out his hand, both he who helps will fall. And he who is helped will fall down. They all will perish together. Amen. Hallelujah. So the Egyptians are coming, they are just, they are not God. And when God strikes... When God stretches his hand, anyone that rise against me, they will fall down. Amen. Hallelujah. Next one. What does he say? This is when um, uh, King Shennacherib came against Hezekiah and threatened, and everyone was afraid. And the king said to the Israel, he said to them, with, with this man, he's, he, he, with him is an arm of flesh, but with us, we have God. This guy is strong, but he's a human. But we have God. Say, I have God. Say, I have God. Say, say, do we have our God to help us and to fight our battles? That's why you trust in God. Because I have God who will help me and who will fight all my battles for me. Hallelujah. And when they said this, the people were strengthened by the words of Hezekiah. Hallelujah. May you be strengthened by the word today. May the word of the Lord strengthen you today. From today, may he transform you in, in the name of Jesus. May he transform you from fear to trust in the name of Jesus. Any fear in your mind and in your body, we declare it disappear in the name of Jesus. 
any fear that is keeping you bound, may it disappear in the name of Jesus. And may you learn to trust in God whenever you are afraid. And God will help you. Hallelujah. Be on your feet and let's pray. Be on your feet and let's pray.